أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين <coughs> وما بعد إن شاء الله today we're going to continue with the same باب باب في بيان كثرة طرق الخير we actually covered the first part twice um, to highlight the emphasis of the different ways and different venues that we can obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, um, the, the hadith that actually we're going to start with um, today is the second hadith in this bab. And this hadith is um, an Abi Dharrin رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يصبح على كل سلامة من أحدكم صدقة فكل تسبيحة صدقة وكل تحميلة صدقة وكل تهليلة صدقة وكل تكبيرة صدقة وأمر بالمعروف صدقة ونهي عن المنكر صدقة ويجزئ من ذلك ركعتان يركعهما من الضحى <تصفيق> So in this hadith, um, it's also narrated by um, Abadr, he's the first, uh, he's the one who narrated the first hadith, and this is the second hadith. <coughs> I do apologize, I have a um, case of sore throats, I'm trying to continue, inshallah, hopefully we can finish the, the class for the time that it's meant for, inshallah. So he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this hadith, he said every morning that each and every one of us wakes up, we owe there is there is there is a debt on each joint and within our bodies and he said in in this hadith it's like it's a debt that we have to to do our best to pay off and he said making tasbih making tahleel saying allahu akbar in every one of these there is sadaqah each one there is sadaqah you say subhanallah there is sadaqah you say allahu akbar there is sadaqah you say alhamdulillah there is sadaqah uh, when you say la ilaha illallah there is um, sadaqah and <coughs> commanding people to do that, which is good, there is sadaqah. Um, commanding them or telling them or reminding them to stay away from that which is bad is also a sadaqah. And he said, then it would suffice for the son of Adam or the child of Adam to perform two rak'ah of duha. That's what we call salatul duha. He said that would suffice, meaning Throughout the day, you can do the tasbih and takbir and tahleel and hamd and all that. And we should actually do it even in addition to Salat al duha by the way. Uh, but he said, for the start of the day, after the sun rises, obviously we do not pray Salat al duha as the sun is rising. We don't. Uh, Salat al duha actually is after the sun rises. So we have to wait for the sun to rise and we pray Salat al duha it's the minimum is two rak'ah. Obviously, you can pray as many as you want. We have a narration of 12 rak'ah. Um, that obviously, alhamdulillah, whoever wants to add, there's blessing in that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't let anything to go in vain. Meaning, if you want to do the two rak'ah, go ahead, do two at least, four, six, eight, whatever the number that you want to do. And again, we have uh, the ulama, when they say 12, it just shows that the number could increase. Um, and we do it before, obviously, before, um, you know, the, the sun hits the, the you know, the, the, the center um, or reaches the, the center uh, position that it has in the sky. So that's Salat al -Duha. And uh, it's a sunnah. And we know that, um, you know, the Prophet Sallam prayed it. Um, those who came after him, the Sahaba, maintained that. And of course, the Salaf and the Khalaf after that Salaf. Alhamdulillah, until this day, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we still have this um, great Sunnah um, still alive, um, you know, amongst the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's something um, to show us that the Sadaqah, or one of the ways that actually we can do it, um, there is no excuse for any one of us, um, you know, to be dhikr. And obviously we know dhikr is one of the best ways that actually of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and obviously we want to keep our tongue always moist with the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I mentioned this in Ramadan, especially when it comes to alhamdulillah and istighfar. And obviously saying la ilaha illallah and saying, you know, Allahu Akbar and all of that. Uh, so these are things that uh, the Prophet 
um, you know, has been known to maintain these throughout, especially when it comes to istighfar. Um, and that's something, um, obviously, it's great for us to do. The third hadith in this bab and the second hadith for today's class. Um, also, it's actually uh, narrated by um, Abi Dhar radiallahu anhu. قال, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عرضت علي عمال أمتي حسنها وسيئها فوجدت من محاسن أعمالها الأذى يماط عن الطريق ووجدت في مساوي أعمالها النخاعة تكون في المسجد لا تدفن So, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, all the deeds of the ummah, of this ummah, were shown um, to the Prophet ﷺ. So he got to see all of them. And he said, among the mahasin, among the good deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the Prophet ﷺ. And obviously, this is to show the Prophet ﷺ, and by default to show us, because he shares all of that with us. Say, so do not belittle these things. And also, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, puts it in a position, then we have to keep it at that position. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is a good deed, we keep it as a good deed. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is a bad deed, then we have to treat it as such. So he said, the among the good deeds, among the good deeds that the ummah does, again he said, mahasin, um, you know, a'mal of my ummah, meaning the good deeds of my ummah, the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, when we have something harmful, anything that is harmful to the ummah, um, we remove it with the intention that is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning we're removing this harmful thing, no matter how small or big it is, um, with the intention that it is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is considered to be a hasana. As actually there is a hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I saw a, uh, an individual in Jannah, enjoying Jannah, uh, for a um, you know a tree branch or a tree that was actually in the middle of the the path of the believers or the Muslims, and that person removed it. It was harmful. It was uh, you know harming them, and it put them at discomfort. And that person removed it for no other reason other than for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala rewarded that person with um, Jannah. And he said from the Masawa of the A'mal, obviously now this hadith, uh, this part of hadith doesn't apply to most of our masajid. So we take and we scale to it. Um, anything that is considered to be, um, you know, um, unclean, it's found in the masjid and we don't remove it. Obviously take it and scale to it. You know, back in the days they had the sand and they could cover uh, if somebody spits or, or, you know, sometimes people do that or something, whatever the case is, something that is not considered to be clean. Um, he said the Prophet ﷺ of the Masaw, of the Siyat, that we see something in the masjid that we're supposed to pick it up and throw it away, we leave it. We leave it on the carpet, we leave it on the ground, we leave it and we don't uh, take that responsibility of picking it up and clean it. Obviously, if we intentionally throw it, throw it there on the ground, obviously that's even a bigger of a sin. But subhanAllah, by default, we know that because that's a bad thing, then cleaning, meaning picking up after somebody else who intentionally or unintentionally left something behind on the carpet or the floor or what have you, depending on what message you're attending, picking that up, that is a hasana. Again, do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have some individuals who say, well, I didn't do it. You know, I didn't throw it. So why should I have um, you know, to be the one to pick it up. SubhanAllah, this is not the attitude of a believer. The attitude of a believer, we always remove harm, we always remove dirt from the path and the way of the believers, especially and most importantly, if it's something found in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam obviously told us clearly that the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the massages. So this is something, again, from this hadith, it's something for us to learn from and inshallah to try to be the best uh, among the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fourth hadith in this bab and the third one for today, um, also narrated by um, Abi Dhar radiallahu anhu. Uh, and he said, people, أَنَّ أُنَاسًا قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ ذَهَبَ أَهْلُ الدُّثُورِ بِالْأُجُورِ يُصَلُّونَ كَمَا نُصَلِّي وَيَسُمُونَ كَمَا نُصُومُ وَيَتَسَدَّقُونَ بِفُضُورِ أَمْوَالِهِمْ 
قال أوليس قد جعل الله لكم ما تصدقون به إن بكل تسبيحة صدقة وكل تكبيرة صدقة وكل تحميلة صدقة وكل تهليلة صدقة وأمر بالمعروف صدقة ونهي عن المنكر صدقة وفي بضع أحدكم صدقة قالوا يا رسول الله أيأتي أحدنا شهوته ويكون له فيها أجر قال أرأيتم لو وضعها في حرام أكان عليه وزر فكذلك إذا وضعها في الحلال كان له أجره. And in this hadith, um, it kind of like you know um, emphasize and re-emphasize on the things that were mentioned in the hadith. Uh, you know uh, the the uh, second hadith in in um, in this bab, and it was the first hadith that actually went over it. Just be ham to kabir all of that. So uh, a group of people went to the Prophet and this actually were the poor people, people who did not have the funding, um, you know, the financial. Uh, you know, asset to help them donate and, and be among, you know, the ones that, um, you know, give for the sabilillah from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with. So they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, Ya Rasulullah, the people with wealth, right, those who are wealthy, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them, you know, they precede us, they, they, they are ahead of us, right? We're not able to catch up with them because yeah, they, you know, they're doing things that we cannot do. And... The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told them he said well if you know didn't you know that every tasbih every takbir al amr bil ma'ruf and nahyu anil munkar all these they are sadaqat even when you are in that um, relationship of intimacy between you and your spouse that is a sadaqa they said ya rasulullah do we get rewarded for something that we enjoy he said isn't it haram if you do it in in, in the haram way don't you get punished if you don't do it in the haram way Likewise, if you do it in some in a way that is, you know, halal uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has constituted for us, then you get rewarded for that. The point that actually I want to draw to our attention here, the first one, subhanAllah, the poor, you know, those who don't have the wealth, they didn't sit back and say, you know what, well, that's it. Uh, we have no chance and, you know, they, they got it all and we're going to take a break. They went to the Prophet and said, we want a fair fight. We want, we want to compete. We want to... To, you know, to feel that we are at that level with the, with the um, you know, the wealthy ones. And the Prophet said, well, then, then remember, you have ways, right? A believer doesn't create obstacles. A, be a believer doesn't put barriers in front of them in the goal of achieving. Because all of them, the goal was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To do that which is most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for them, the competition was real. And actually, in, in, in this um, uh, narration, actually, there is a narration, um, you know, parallel to this, in which actually they came back later, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, now they learned what you told us. Ya Rasulullah, the rich, they learned what you told us. They, they learned the old tasbihah and all of that, so now they're doing it. And Allah, the Prophet he said, That's, you know, that's, that's the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he gives it to whomever he wants. But here's the thing. In this hadith, what we learn is, the himma that the people have, you know, they want to compete. They, they really want to, to, to kind of, like, you know, be up there. They didn't settle for the lowest. But then, Islam, which is a reminder in this hadith, you're not competing with others. You're competing with yourself. And the Prophet ﷺ explained that to us. He said, you know what? Each one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a blessing, right? So use the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Don't look at other people's blessings. Don't say... Well, if, you know, that person has, that's why he's given, and I'm not even going to try anything else because it's not fair because I'm, I don't have what that person has. You have other things that that person doesn't have. But because we focus so much on what that person has, we, we, we turn a blind eye to what we have. And look, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ gave him a way that no one can claim that we don't have. Just to be, just tahrira, just takbira, just alhamd, anything of that nature, the Prophet ﷺ said, that gives you sadaqah. So don't sit and say, I cannot. Sitting, as you're sitting, make tasbih, make takbir, make tahleel, make, make whatever. You see something wrong, remind people and say, you know what? Uh, you know, that is, you know, that is wrong. Maybe we shouldn't be doing it. Or, you know, whatever the situation is, or that is haram, we shouldn't be doing it. Or there's something good, so please, you know, remind people. The Prophet ﷺ told us, the one who shows people, shows the path um, to that which is good. And if people follow, that person gets the reward without taking away from their rewards. And then the Prophet adds to this and he says, here's the reality of deen. 
If you live it fully in full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything, almost everything that you do, it actually, you get a reward for it. Actually, in, in usul al-fiqh, the mubah, the permissible thing, the default ruling, the default ruling for anything permissible, right? The default ruling for that is if you do it, there is no reward for it. If you don't do it, there is no punishment, okay? Um, it's permissible. But they said, <laughs> if you change your intention and that you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you get rewarded. Look, subhanAllah, what the intention does when we just put it in the right place. So they said, again, the permissible. The, the permissible. The, the, there, is no, there is no reward by, def by default. There is no reward. There is no punishment. You do it, do it. You don't do it, don't do it. Like, for instance, eating. You want to eat rice, you want to eat rice, then eat. But when you say, you know what, my intention is that I, I'm eating to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I can pray more, so I can become healthy, so I become, you know, strong, so I can do this. And this. Then just the fact that you're eating, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it. SubhanAllah, look, this is the deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. So, um, that's that's something very, um, friend, this is something actually that I try always, um, try to teach my students and I tell them, do not belittle these things. You know, always um, keep your intention. And this is, again, I always keep referring to it. This is the first bab in the Riyadh al-Salihin. The first bab, ikhlas al niyyah Ikhlas al niyyah That pure intention is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for nothing else. I'm not trying to do it to please others. I'm not trying to do it so I can look in a certain way or, or, or be praised. No, I'm doing it just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, everything you do, and obviously when you have ikhlas and niyyah, you're going to avoid the haram. There's no way that you're going to have ikhlas and niyyah with the knowledge and you're going to do something haram. Right? That's why we say ikhlas and niyyah al-ittiba. So even the permissible things, even the regular habits, things that we do on a daily basis, you get rewarded for that. And look, subhanAllah, here's a hadith, the fifth hadith in this bab, which is the fourth one in this um, class. Again, he says, قَالَ لِي النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا تَحْقِرَنَّ مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ شَيْئًا وَلَوْ أَن تَلْقَ أَخَاكَ بِوَجْهٍ طَلِيقٍ Subhanallah um, The Prophet ﷺ said do not belittle <coughs> any good deed do not belittle any deed even if you were just to see to meet your brother or sister it was just وَجْهٍ طَلِيقٍ you're not angry you don't look sad you don't look kind of like you know disappointed just Assalamu alaikum. Just that. Just that. And I can smile. As the Prophet says, You know, smile in the face of your brother or sister, you know, is a sadaqah. SubhanAllah. Just that. As simple as that. Meaning, just, just putting that smile. Just putting that smile. That in itself is sadaqah. Again, this is something that every one of us can do. We have no reason not to do it. And SubhanAllah, in that there is a sadaqah. This is the beauty of deen and subhanAllah, wallahi, when we think about it, if we all actually go with these, um, you know, hadith and these recommendations uh, by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a community, as a society, uh, we'll be in a better position, in a much, much, much better position, subhanAllah. Um, but it's just the fact that many of us know a lot, but do a little. So just take this hadith for instance. Start your day and just with a smile, you know, smile and, and add to it, salam alaikum, just a smile. That, you know, subhanAllah, and, and actually in, 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 um, in psychology, they speak about nonverbal communication, nonverbal expressions. You don't have to say anything. Just your facial expression will say a lot on your behalf, right? When you see someone and, you know, you just give them that look that these people call dirty look or... Or, you know, just like, you know, or, or that you just fawn in front of them. You don't have to say anything. And that in itself, it, it, it says a lot to the other person. Um, you know, on the opposite side of that, if you just smile, right, that also says a lot to the other person. So the Prophet said that in itself is a salakah. So that itself is, is a salakah. Um, again, the sixth hadith in this bab, uh, and Abi Huraira, so this is uh, a different narration of um, that which takes the same uh, meaning um, with obviously 
uh, you know, different uh, things being added. Uh, this is narrated by Abu Huraira, and this is actually referring to the second hadith in this bab. Uh, he said, "Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, kullu sulama min al nasi alayhi sadaqa kull yom tatlu wa tatlu fihi al shams taadil bayn al tnayni sadaqa wa tuhin al rajul fi dabbatihi fa tahmilu alayha aw tarfa lahu alayha mata'u sadaqa wa al kalima al tayyib sadaqa wa bi kull khutwa tamshiha ila al salat sadaqa wa tumit al adha an al tariq sadaqa muttafaq alayh." Again, this hadith. It confirms and re reaffirms for us the second hadith in this bab, uh, and obviously it adds a little bit. It says on every joint there is a sadaqa that it's due um, every time the sun rises in that day, and he says bringing two together, those who might have disagreements or, or misunderstandings, whatever, and and you bring them together, and and you fix that misunderstanding, or you know you bring or or you 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 mend. The, the you know um, the things that unfortunately were broken uh, that is a sadaqah and here's the thing the one thing I want to say um, don't count don't count one sadaqah two sadaqahs no sadaqah meaning it opens the door for rewards meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could take that one one time where you brought two people together especially spouses especially spouses and siblings where, where there is a rahim and there is a potential of qati'at rahim when you bring them together, don't think that it's one sadaqah. No, no, no. Sadaqah is just, it's, it opens the door for rewards. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could reward, reward you as much as he wants in that one. So that's, I, I want to, to, to bring to bring that to, to our attention. Sadaqah, again, Islamically we actually scale to these things. Prophet when he gives us an example, we take anything and we scale to it. So he says somebody on, on his dabba, meaning his mule, his camel, um, donkey, horse, or any ride, meaning you, you help them with that ride to, to, to get on the ride. Obviously, if it's an animal, you get on that, um, you know, on the back of the animal. Uh, but take it in scale to it. Uh, or he says you put the mata of that person, um, you know, the belongings of that person, you know, on the back of that camel or the horse or whatever. And again, you see someone, let's say, walking, um, you know, an elderly person, you carry the things with them. Again, scale to that. So don't just narrow your mind and say, so is it these specific actions? No. Um, anything that actually fits in that criteria, anything that the help is provided for the sick false panda, all of that counts. Again, the Prophet has just given us examples so we can appreciate and, and, and recognize the ways that actually we can earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. والكلمة الطيبة صدقة. You know the 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 pure the the the, the clean. Um, you know um, the, the the Islamically um, encouraged word, right? طيبة because it means like it's pure, it's clean, and, and and our scale here is Islam. You know, so anything that Islamically is considered to be good is considered to be encouraged. So those words, if you say that to your brother or your sister again, there is صدقة in that. That's something that. We ought to remind ourselves, like, "Man kan yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir, falyakul khayran aw yasmut." Whoever believes in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the Day of Judgment, uh, that person shall say that which is good, or keep quiet. Okay. So if you're intending to hurt someone, harm someone, uh, hurt their feelings or whatever, just, just just don't say anything. You're better off not saying anything. Okay. So say something if it's something good, right? And that if you do that, this is sadaqah. Subhanallah. And every step. Uh, you take as you're heading to the words of the masjid for salah, it's sadaqah. And what to meet al-adha in tariq is sadaqah. And again, like we mentioned, removing anything harmful uh, from the path of the Muslims um, and, and people in general, that is sadaqah. That is sadaqah. Again, as long as we are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> The seventh hadith um, is also an Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man ghada ila masjid ya awrah a'adda allahu lahu fi al-jannati nuzulan kullama ghada awrah muttafaqun alayh Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever goes to the masjid um, for salah and the meaning here ghada awrah any time of the, the day 
any time of the day. All the salawat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares a nuzul. A nuzul here, al qutu wa rizqu wa ma yuhayya ulil dayf. It's, it's, it's the accommodation and, and, and the food and the provision that you give to a guest. And subhanAllah, we honor our guests. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al kareem. So subhanAllah, that in itself, and this is what I said earlier, don't think that sadaqah is like, you know, subhanAllah. Um, a lot of people say, oh, one sadaqah. What's one sadaqah? We don't even know what's 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 one sadaqah in a sense, in, in a human calculation, right? In, in a human measurement. We don't know what's one sadaqah. So don't don't try to belittle it. Don't say it's a small thing. Look, just, just going and coming back, right? Just going and coming back to the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares that, right? So, so and again, don't think, oh, you know, it's, it's a meal. It's in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here's, here's in this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to prepare a meal if we are in Jahannam. Understand that. SubhanAllah al-ulama, they say, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door of sadaqat, the door of doing that which is good for his servants, that's the first good sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. So always when you feel that you don't want to do something good, right? Then don't say, oh, because it's my laziness, it's because I'm not feeling it. Start questioning yourself. Are you in the good terms with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are you in the bad terms with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Meaning you're doing things that are not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the point that He's depriving you of doing that which is good. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're not among those people. You know, so when you're able to do something good, alhamdulillah, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah. And don't be full of yourself because that's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing you with the blessing of being able to do that which is good. So when you go to the masjid, when you do all these things that we mentioned, make sure that you are in, in, in a position of, of gratitude, of appreciation for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with because many people are deprived of doing that. So I think we are going to stop here. I'm sorry. Um, it's, it's getting a little bit um, difficult for me. So inshallah, um, we will continue. Uh, next week, be in life, we are among the living. Anything right I might have said is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything wrong I might have said is from my nafs and from shaitan. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, to make us among those who take advantage of every single opportunity of doing that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us among the ones whom He has forgiven their sins. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may He keep us. Um, firm on that straight path of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Jazakum khair Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh